Hello class, and welcome to the next episode of uh, my Cave Story walkthrough, where we'll be entering the waterway, as you can see. Just enter through the mouth thing, which is now open. So these guys are fairly easy enemies, so you don't need to worry about it too much. In fact, the Polar Star should actually be enough to deal with them. But uh, in some cases, you might need to use a slightly more powerful weapon. So we'll be trying to re-level up our Polar Star after it's uh, leveled down in the previous episode while we were fighting the core, which is quite brutal for your weapons. But as you can see, we're back up to level 3, so all we need is a few more points so we can get uh, back to the max level. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, over this way, and over this way, and up here, and all that good stuff. So, yeah. And, uh, so we're pretty much fully leveled now. It's just. They basically just, just uh, level up whatever weapon you want, I guess. You'll, you'll be. Eventually, you'll get all the experience you'll need, anyway. So anyway, over here. This is a secret I actually discovered on my own. It's uh, kind of hard to remember, but if uh, there's actually invisible blocks over on this part, over here, that actually drop a little health um, when you break them. So, yeah. Just shoot, shoot them a bit, and they'll give you some health points. So there you go. There's a few more in a later section of this video. This is pretty much just all water platforming and uh, water jets and that kind of thing. It really does get annoying, but with the air tank you don't have to worry about drowning. So yeah, just time your jumps properly for these spikes and you should be fine. And uh, yeah, so as you can see the goal is to get onto the uh, right side. You're going to have to actually move slightly in order to accomplish that. But uh, you should be fine. Anyway, here's more of the jellyfish. And uh, so the blade, the level 3 blade, is actually quite effective at taking out uh, these swarms because of its area of effect tendencies. So, anyway. And uh, yeah, it's just me being a little bit OCD trying to get that last one, but we don't really need to. Basically, you just gotta try to guide yourself around these currents. You'll eventually come out onto here and you'll be pushed out onto this ledge. Now be very careful, do not fall down because Curly Brace will die if you do not make this jump. So anyway, up here, and here we are. So head into this waterway cabin area. There's a bed, you can go ahead and sleep there. This refills your life and it's actually essential to saving Curly. So anyway, after you finish resting, Curly is now on the bed, and we are at full health. So there we go. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and inspect these bookshelves. So this one doesn't have anything of interest, but this one here has a notebook that is covered in dust. There's actually a requirement to opening it up. That's, uh, you have to go inspect this computer, I believe. So anyway, text is displayed on screen, and he also recorded some findings on the notebook. So, don't know who that is, but it's someone. I don't know. Anyway, the notebook's covered in dust, so go ahead and open it up. So robots manufactured on the surface have limited aquatic um, maneuverability and the system will flood so they shut down to prevent short circuiting which is why we need to have an air supply. So we're trying to service a flooded robot, uh, Curly. So yay, we now have knowledge, sort of. So anyway, so they begin a reboot process automatically after using the above method of training. Let's go ahead and save now that we do so we don't have to sit through that again. And uh, talk to Curly. So we drain out the water using the process we just learned. It's uh, nothing special, you just interact with her and it's gone. So this is a little slower than it should be because of lag, uh, recording lag, but other than that, it's, it's not that bad. Anyway, so Curly's uh, waking up. So we're safe. So she's glad for that. So we thought we were a goner. So uh, we lost consciousness and she couldn't think of anything to do about it. So she gave us her air tank. Okay. So the reboot process is beginning. So the restart process will take some time to complete. Would you like to leave her here? No. You will take her with you should take her with you. Unfortunately the bed is soaked, so we can't really sleep there anymore. Anyway, just bring Curly with you now that you've successfully rebooted her. Uh, you can go ahead and take her along with you. Um, but first, there's a neat little tidbit on this computer now. Text is displayed on screen. You can do it. So, 
that's probably some little egging on to get to the last ending. After we finish saving Curly Brace, or pretty much the only thing we have to do is get the booster 2.0. So yeah, down here. Now if you had not saved Curly, it would be impossible to get back, and you would have lost her forever and been unable to access the best ending. So yeah. Anyway, over this way. And down here. Try not to lose too much health because there's actually a boss in this area. Now I do manage to beat him on the first try that I actually try the boss. All the other times I just missed the jump up to the cabin. And uh... So it, it's a pretty simple boss, but it has a very unique gimmick. It's like a 2D space sim or something like that. So anyway, something's coming. So we can maneuver in any of the four directions. Use any gun we want. Those little fish, when they become the puffer mode, they, uh, they are actually dangerous to you. So be careful of them. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, clear out all the fish and hit the big one. So just hit the big one as much as you can. So yeah. So you do have quite a bit of maneuverability, so you don't have to worry too much about any of that. Basically, you, the only thing you really have to worry about is the little fish. Just kill all the little fish and you should be fine. Or even or you can just even avoid them. And the boxes can get quite annoying as well. But if you know what you're doing, they should be pretty easy to avoid. You can see my reflexes are finally honed, so I'm like dodging everywhere. I only have six health left, so I'm gonna have to be very efficient in taking out this boss. So the fireball still goes down, even though you're kind of floating. But uh, anyway, avoid the boxes, avoid the fish, hit the big one. It's a simple process, but it works. So we're gonna need. Can't hit that big fish. Gotta hit the big fish. So the blade is actually really effective because of your maneuverability and ability to get up behind it. It also plows through all the little fish if you're at level 2. So it's quite easy to uh, clear out a group. So do not worry when Curly floats away from you here. She is supposed to do that and you will not see her again until the plantation episode. So anyway, here we are. You probably recognize this area. This is Mimiga Village. But all the Mimiga are gone, and the music track has changed too. It's got a little mysterious feel to it. So, yeah. Hmm. As you can probably guess, the area you're supposed to go to is, of course, Arthur's house. This is where the teleporter is and everything. But, uh, first things first, let's hit the save point in the life refill, because we need that. Okay. Here we go. Life refill. And the save point. So anyway, in through here, and over this way. So there's really not much else to show you. I can just let you know everywhere that there was a Mimika, there is not anymore. So yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it. So if you so if you have if you actually did talk to, to Professor Booster, this part would not happen. So somehow he survived, I'm assuming he used the booster V08 or something, in order to get down to the teleporter and fix it. I'm really not sure how he survived, but okay. So the doctors have amassed the red flowers, all of Mimika of the island have now fallen under his grip, and he is totally ready for an attack. So, yeah. So apparently he's worried about Sue escaping. So there we are, the booster V2.0, the best jetpack and the best maneuverability you can have in the entire game. So Dr. Sakamoto's daughter or something for the longest time, she didn't want to come to the island at all, but uh, she couldn't be left behind, so don't stay home alone. Anyway, so she had no choice but to come to the island, so, so Professor Booster now is all like, there's nothing we can do, we have to escape. So he's being a little bit pessimistic, isn't he? So let's go ahead and equip the booster, and I'll show you guys how it works in a bit. So, yeah, it, it might seem a bit unnatural using the jetpack for a bit, but um, but once once you use it for a bit, once you use it for just a little bit, trust me, it, it it'll be like second nature to you. And then it gets really annoying to do a second playthrough. So anyway. Up here, as you can see, it boosts you straight up for quite a distance, and it also goes side to side and down. If you if you spam the button, you can actually gain a lot of distance. So as you can see, I didn't quite make that, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try spamming it just to show you guys how that works. Basically, 
just little spurts. It tends to get you a little farther, but if you're going horizontally, but um, of course it allows gravity to take hold. So, yeah, be careful of that. So here we are with a level one polar star. Not quite sure how that happened, but um, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, level up a bit. So you might be wondering why we're back here. In case you have, in case you're wondering, I may I may have mentioned uh, trading in the polar star for quote unquote the best weapon in the entire game. That's what we're going for here. We are heading back to the Hermit Gunsmith, a kind of unknown character unless you actually know where you're going. And it's impossible to get back here without the machine gun or the or the boost booster 2.0. So glad we have that. And um, we're going to talk to this character, learn a little more about him, and get the best weapon in the game. As you can see, the chest is empty. And uh, there. So, so he made the Polar Star, and someone pilfered it while he slept. So we're stealers now. Wait a minute, that's his gun! Why do you have it? He didn't make it for us. So he wants it back now. So we lost the Polar Star. A lot of people will think that's a bad idea for that. So apparently we've put a significant amount of wear on it. So apparently he was raised to believe that weapons should always be constructed by oneself and that kind of thing. He's always been a craftsman. And, uh, yeah. But basically what he, what's, what he's going to do, long story short, he's going to take the Polar Star, he realizes that, that you put so much wear on it and, and he's so surprised that, that you used it so much. So apparently the Polar Star is actually incomplete. It's going to finish it for us, and it will be the best weapon in the entire game. So we wait here for a bit, basically just a two second black screen, and here we are. So the Polar Star is now complete. It's, it is now the Spur, the best weapon in the entire game. So that's debatably, but in my opinion it definitely is. So, you don't even need to worry, so, yeah, between those who create and those who experience the creations of others. So you can't say they wasn't aware of it, he'd never experienced it though, so this, this is probably the most heart, one of the most heartfelt points in the entire game. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so the interesting part about this weapon is that um, in, instead of an experience bar, it actually is a charge meter. You just hold down the button. The higher the level, the more effective the gun is. So basically, the fire button, if you hold it down, is effectively the gain experience button. As you can see, you can spam it for the level 3 polar star effect, but should you hold down the button, it will uh, charge up all the way to level max. As you can see, at uh, level 2, it shoots a beam straight head on with a lot of range. At level 2, it shoots two be at level 3, it shoots three beams of the same, um, which basically just de deals double damage, and at the, and at the max level, it's uh, it's got stupid high range and ridiculously awesome uh, damage. It can do up to it can do in the hundreds range, and all the all of the beams, even the level one one, goes through every enemy it hits until it's until it gets to its max range. And even just spamming the level three polar star effect is still pretty effective. So yeah. It's a he really heavy hitter weapon. So yeah, there we have it. Anyway, using conjunction with the uh, the increased uh, range of the spur combined with the level two jetpack, gives us some pretty effective firing techniques. We can like fire up from above enemies, and uh, or we can like boost up and hit enemies that are off screen because the range is so stupid high. This weapon just provides so many possibilities, and it's way better than the machine gun, especially because you already have the booster V 2.0, so you can pretty much get to anywhere in the game that you want to. So anyway, uh, yeah. And the, my favorite part about this weapon is you never have to worry about, ex about its experience level, because the X button is pretty much the gain experience button. So. As my definite favorite part about this weapon is you never have to worry about experience. So you can kill enemies with this gun, and then uh, give all the experience to some other weapon that you're trying to level up. Now you might be wondering why I'm not doing that here, it's because it's only one experience shard, it's not terribly worth it anyway. 
So anyway, now that we have the best weapon and the most maneuverability in the game, let's uh, get on with said game and uh, head down to Arthur's house, down here, and here, and uh, go ahead and uh, nab the save point really quick. So yeah. And uh, save again just to make sure our missiles are at full. Anyway, so we now have a really awesome weapon. Now there's a few things we're going to need to grab later, but uh, but for now let's just head to the egg corridor. Actually, yeah, let's, let's head to the labyrinth first before we head to the egg corridor so we can finish up a few things. Like for instance, remember that item that you couldn't grab earlier? With the booster 2.0, it's quite easy to grab. So anyway, as you can see this teleporter has been fixed. And now leads directly to Arthur's house. So there we go. So we'll be paying a visit to the labyrinth shop first. Um, we'll be paying a visit to the labyrinth shop, as, and as well as that uh, place with the with the uh, item that you couldn't get earlier. So anyway, with the beam, it's with the beam and the booster, it is quite easy to knock down all the enemies in this area. The beam is quite good at piercing, and it does more than enough damage to destroy pretty much any projectile in your way. So I'm not really worrying about experience here because I just figure why not, why would I? But um, right now, at this moment in time, we, there is only one weapon that we do not have, and that is a trade-out for the blade. So we're gonna stick with the blade for now. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the ground guys are quite easy to take care of, especially if they don't jump. Uh, yeah. I don't know, there's just not much to say about the spur, it's just plain awesome. Anyway. So yeah, just one good shot is enough to plow through those guys. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't know what to say, really. We're just heading backwards through the labyrinth. So with the jetpack, these jumping puzzles become much easier. You can kind of boost up into the wall there, and over here. So by now you should be starting to get the hang of this, um, with the of the jetpack. With split second timing comes skill with weapons, and you can combine those and everything. Basically, you're, you'll be doing fine. So yeah, I guess I don't really know what to say. But, uh, you can use the experience charge dropped by these guys, which is the most you'll see at this part in the game. And uh, well, yeah, then you can. Use that to go ahead and uh, level up your missile launcher and other weapons that may have gotten leveled down, like the blade or the bubble line. So let's uh, get rid of these guys. So yeah, pick up this experience for the blade, and we are now at max level for the blade. So if you do time it properly and everything, you can you can switch directions in midair, but it does require you to uh, stop and then restart your. Uh, your booster. So, anyway, down here and then through this door, we can access this item, which is kind of worthless for the spur, but it's called the Arms Barrier. Basically what it does is it halves the experience you lose when you take damage, which is really, really awesome. See, weapon energy loss from sustaining damage is halved. So yeah, it's very effective, especially when you're trying to keep your levels on your other weapons up in case you should ever want to use them. But if you do have the machine gun, you can grab this item earlier, and it makes some boss fights much, much easier. So anyway, let's go ahead and get rid of these guys, and then pay a visit to the labyrinth shop. Anyway, yeah. So as you can see, the level one um, spur blast is not the most effective, but it does enough damage to be viable, especially especially with the heavily increased range that it has. So yeah, it's definitely much better than the Polar Star, that's a plus. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to save here, but anyway. As you can see, we're getting back up to max level, and here we are. We are now at the best possible state we could be at this part, at this part of the game. Sorry. So in case you're wondering why I chose now to go back here, it's because A, we have pretty much unlocked all the weapons, and B, um, we're about to uh, head into, uh, again, this episode was kind of short, 
I'm probably gonna have, end up finishing the egg corridor anyway. But uh, just to be safe, I decided to lengthen the episode a little bit by coming back in here. So with the jetpack, you can get back up to that teleporter. But for now, let's go ahead and talk to the labyrinth shop guy. Uh, same line of dialogue about have, not having anything to sell. Anyway, so look, he'll give us this, the Whimsical Star. It's quite a useful item, especially in the last area of the game. But uh, anyway, so it's more like a decoration. That's uh, about all he can offer since we're already in possession of an ultimate weapon. Even even the shopkeeper guy recognizes that our weapon is the best in the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's a little item from Chaba in the Labyrinth. Right now it's equipped. Basically what it does is whenever your weapon is at max level and you collect experience, it spawns a little star. And a neat little bonus is that because X is essentially the gain experience button for the spur, if you get it to max level and uh, just pretty much just hold it down a, slight, a little bit after you get it to max, it is, uh, it is possible to just spawn the entire Whimsical Star uh, trio just by holding down the button. Basically what they do is, is they float around you at a, a seemingly random pattern and they hit enemies. It's it's a simple simple matter really. So basically, just hit enemies. They do a little bit of damage. Really, not much to be worth it. But the enemies in the last area of the game have surprisingly low health for what they are. So it's uh, so it makes them much easier if you can hit them from behind the wall using the whimsical star. So let's wait for this guy to pass. Down here. Down here. And we got crushed by the thing. That was kind of a dur moment. But luckily we saved after getting the Whimsical Star, so we don't have to repeat any of that. So anyway, the episode was kind of short as it is, but as you can see we're approaching 22 minutes and we're about, well, two-thirds of the way, so we should be done soon. Don't worry about it too much. Anyway. And, uh... Yeah, I guess. Not much to say, really. We're just going back, using this, using the most ridiculously overpowered weapon in the game on these guys. Still just as easy to dodge. Still just as easy to room clear. Anyway, up here and over here. With the jetpack. It's easier to stay at the air over on the side there. Oop! I hit with the spikes because I did judge for the amount of jetpack we had left. And you gotta squeeze through that hole really quickly, or that thing crushes you again. Yeah. Anyway. So it's a, it's a pretty simple area here, especially because the level 3 has incredible plow through effects in it, and it just obliterates everything in its path. As you can see, I was doing 40 damage every shot. If it hits an enemy that it doesn't go through, you can imagine what it does. Just the entire beam just hits him after uh, again and again and again. It just gets obliterated. As you can see, the level one beam does stop if it finds an enemy that it can't quite deal all its damage to. So the plow through effect is basically how much damage it's doing. If it just obliterates it, then it goes right on through and hits the next few enemies. But if it doesn't do enough damage to kill it, it just uh, stays where it is and kind of pokes at it a bit. Anyway, here we are back at Arthur's house, and over this way. So he doesn't have any special dialogue, he just says that pretty much over and over again. Let's go ahead and uh, tag the save point again really quick. And uh, there we go. Let's save again because double saves are cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and head to the egg corridor, I believe. Yeah. This is me figuring I might as well end the video, but then I realize that uh, it was only like 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and teleport to the egg corridor away. So with the spur, it's much, much easier. Anyway, this is not the egg corridor you remember. As you can see, it has a question mark after the name and everything's kind of wrecked. The little white thing at the bottom has also disappeared. So there's a, apparently there was a violent explosion all of a sudden and everything was like this after he came back around. I don't even know. But as you can see, the eggs have all hatched and most of them failed miserably. As you 
can see this is a carcass of a flying dragon. Poor sad little thing. And I died a couple times because this area is harder than it looks. Yeesh. These guys love to hide behind the signs and surprise you. The enemies are pretty much the same. That doesn't mean they're any more any less challenging though, because there's a lot more. So the time your jumps correctly and you can get the beam directly through most of the enemies. Anyway. Good uh, level 3 beam there. And there we go. So we can use a jetpack to get those floating things now. You may notice that these spikes on you may notice these spikes on the ceiling. And you're probably wondering why aren't they falling? They're about to. See, as you can see, that spike fell. As you probably could have guessed, they all do 10 damage as the normal. So that was a zombie dragon. There's a max missile increasing chest. They do drop uh, quite a bit of loot, but uh, they're I don't know. They're they're, they're kind of just deadified, I guess, because they all hatched failed, and they're all kind of the, just zombies, I guess. Anyway, let's head into Cthulhu's abode, where it's full of spikes now. So level 3 is enough to go ahead and obliterate that, just straight on. Here's the jetpack. So you, it does take quite a bit to charge this weapon, but it's, uh, it's worth it for the effect. So pretty much all of these levels except the secret last ones that require you to have the booster 2.0. All of these levels are designed to be completed without the use of a jetpack, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it was a last minute addition along with the... to go along with the um, last secret ending. Apparently the spikes only do 5 damage, but the big ones obliterate you instantly. So you'll see that thing has a timer next to it. If you manage to kill it in, in enough time, it, uh, it will die. But if you are, but if you are in within a very, very large radius when the timer goes all the way down, you will die. So, yeah, get out of there. Get out, get out, get out. So anyway, uh, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, there's only one of those guys in the game, although there are a sort of closest variant in the last area. Spikes are falling, we are running. So over here, just run all the way over here. And you can step on these large spikes, but we're uh, gonna go ahead and charge it up. And uh, hit him hard. So in here is a little neat little secret. This is the egg observation room. There's a chest in here. If you grab it, there will be a boss fight. But it does increase your max missiles. So the door closes off, cold breeze blows through, and there's some dragons. So basically just charge up your missile all the way, wait for one of them to open their mouth, and hit them. If you do enough damage, they will close their mouths and no attack will be launched. It's uh, pretty easy to understand, especially because you do so much damage with the spur, it just, it just makes the boss fight so easy. So pretty much just hit them when their mouths are open. And uh, don't worry about their attacks, because if you hit them while their mouths are open, they won't be able to attack. Yeah. It's it's a pretty simple boss fight, but if you do not have the spur, or you do not, how to you do not know how to use it properly or anything like that, it can get pretty annoying, especially because you have to restart the entire egg observation room all over again, should you fail. So those were called the sisters, they were two of the successful hatches, and apparently they were feeling kind of mischievous. So this actually also spawns a save point for you. So there you go. So this door is blocked off uh, by rubble, so we're gonna have to come over here and exit through this door. Watch out for his falling spikes, they're becoming more common as we progress through the area. You can use the horizontal booster, which is way faster than just walking, to just speed through all the spikes, pretty much. But uh, I didn't think about it at the time, because I was I was still getting used to using the booster again after so long, uh, with just plain jumps and everything. These guys are pretty easy, uh, if you know what you're doing. still feel kind of bad for killing them, but still. Anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, the fire is blocked by walls, so you can just, just kind of stay behind a wall and charge up your spur. I believe the fan is turned on if you don't have a booster equipped or something, I don't know. 
Other than that, it's kind of impossible to get up. So up here and over here. And here we are at the save point room. Let's go ahead and tag it. And in this episode, we will actually end the game. But there are, of course, three endings. And it is my job to show you every single one. This is the worst ending of the game. There's no credits or anything. Basically, it's uh, it's it's the worst ending in the entire game, and it's it's pretty much just it's, it's it's pretty much just you run away from the island with Kazuma here on the number zero zero dragon. So, yeah, pretty much you just run away with him on the dragon, and uh, Doctor attacks the island or something. Uh, you leave behind Sue and Booster and everybody, and uh, you kind of just leave. It's not a very good ending, which is why it's called the bad ending. Plus, you skip some of the best areas in the entire... well, you skip pretty much just one area, but that would be the... Uh, you skip the plantation, which has title theme music as the background, which I think is pretty awesome. So anyway... So... Let's, uh, I'm gonna show you what happens when you escape with Kazuma. In the next episode, I will uh, start from the save point and just do the other dialogue choice. So basically just say yes if you want to do the bad ending, or no if you want to go for the good or best endings. Anyway, through here. So here we are on the outer wall of the island, which is a level on itself. In of itself, I guess. It's uh, kind of an up and down scaling level because we're on the outside of an island. But we're not going to explore it yet. We'll be exploring that in the next episode. So anyway, you get on the flying dragon, you fly with Kazuma, and you have proved to the entire world that you are a coward and do not want to face the final levels. Anyway, you just fly away, and that was how you and Kazuma safely escaped. So. But nobody else did. You left behind Sue. And all of Amiga. And the countries of the surface, too. They would need your help. Anyway. So the Doctor would use his island as a flying fortress and strike at the surface. So we're... So it's kind of just leaves questions open. Were the countries able to withstand the Doctor's attacks? From the Amiga. That doesn't really matter, apparently, because you escaped. You're safe, coward. Anyway, so we live within uh, mountains, apparently. You and Kazuma. But, uh, and out of the doctor's reach. So you did safely escape, but was it for the best? Well, the answer is no. So the only choice you have here, there's no credits or anything. It, it's just basically a few minutes of this weird music track, I don't know what that is. So anyway, all you do is just press escape. It, it, even if you're using a controller, you press escape and a little menu comes up. I've used it in some episodes. Essentially, and so this is the end of the episode. I'll show you guys the continuation of the game and the next couple endings in the next couple episodes. So, uh, class is dismissed, I guess. Five episode bad ending. Yeah, see you guys later. Class is dismissed. <laughs>